So anyway, so moving on. So let me just click on Command and Z or Control and Z just so we get the paddle back to where it was before. And I'm just going to click on File, Save Scene and Save Project just as a habit. And let me check my next point. So just one moment, guys. I'm going to catch up where I'm up to. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to work on now is adding some audio to the game. Up until this point, we've obviously done a lot of coding on uh, like the basic structure of the game and how to get the ball moving, uh, collisions and so on. A little bit of graphics, you know, artwork and particles, but really for me, I love music and sound in the game. It really brings a lot of atmosphere and a lot of heart to it. So hopefully, like I say, you guys will have a lot of fun with this. So let's, uh, let's jump in and get going. So the first thing is uh, add an audio source to the ball object. So, okay, so click on the ball. And what we're going to do to get a sound in the game is we need an audio source object. So if I go to component, audio, and then audio source, and if I scroll down on the ball on the right hand side in the inspector view, here you can see the audio source has been added. So uh, for the ball itself, what we're going to have is like an old kind of sort of pong style, uh, like, a, like a little blip sound when it bounces off the wall or when it bounces off the paddle here. And I've already got these sounds before. And these sounds I actually got from this website called freesound.org, which is an awesome website. Totally check it out. Uh, it's free to use the sounds, but some of them do have conditions on the licensing. For example, some of them say you can't, ha you can't use the sound in a commercial product. Or if you do use it in a commercial product, you have to give them some kind of attribution. You have to say, hey, sound by this person, which is great. I mean, that's, that's an awesome exchange. Uh, so definitely check out freesound.org and that's where I've got my sounds. The sounds here, um, I've already added to the project, but just to explain, if you go to create, folder, and then call that folder sounds, this gets created down here. And all I've done to drag these in is I've got my folder here. And what I've done is just to illustrate is I've selected the sound that I wanted, left click, and just hold it inside the folder or over the folder, let go, and there you go, the sound is created. If you want to test the sound inside of the, uh, inside of the editor, just look in, click on the sound itself, uh, and over in the inspector here, you can click play on the bottom right, and that's kind of quiet, you might not be able to hear it, it's quite a, a silent, it's quite a, a low volume sound, but that's how to test it. So I'm just going to right click and delete this, since I don't need it. But these are the three sounds that we're going to use. This is the bonus sound, when it goes through these bonus uh, uh, gates here. Uh, this blue beat one, this is going to be the music. And you might not be able to hear that because again it's quite low, but I'll turn the volume up on the video later so you guys can hear. And this is the power on. Yeah, that's kind of low as well. But that's, uh, that's when the ball's going to hit the wall. So. You know, let me know if you guys post a video on what you've done in the game. It'll be great to see, you know, what how uh, what sounds you've used and what music, because I, I think that's really interesting. So, okay, so the ball, what we've got is an audio source here, and the next thing is, so we made a sounds folder, and I told you about the websites. So optimize the sound that we're going to use. So the sound that we're going to use for the ball is this one here, this power on button, or this power on sound, and. In the audio format here, make sure that you're going to compress, not native WAV, because that's a, that's a much larger file. Uh, the compression uh, compressed here sometimes appears as a uh, an MPEG file, and that that's a smaller compression. But what I'm looking at here in this inspector is this this kilobytes here, this sound or megabytes, depending on how, on how big the file is, and that really tells me how how large that file is going to be when the game is actually compiled together and then put online or put on an iPhone. Um, the other thing is to test is if you're reducing the sound, you can always press play and then test how it is. So, but for the sakes of this tutorial, I mean 5.7 kilobytes is really small, so it's no problem. So click on compressed. Uh, if it's checked on 3D, make sure that's unchecked. Make sure we want a 2D because 3D is basically, if a character is walking around the world, and this is the sound here, as he comes closer, the sound will be louder and louder, and as he walks away, the sound will be quieter. But in this 2D game, we don't really care where the sound is in terms of distance, we just want it to sound and have it, to have it uniform all throughout the game. So once you've changed this, uh, the type here, once you've changed, sorry, the format, and once you've un 
unclips the 3D sound, click apply and do that for each of your sounds and any music file that you might have as well, okay? Now, I've already done this here, but I just wanted to explain, okay? So next thing is on the ball. Um, here, the, this is the audio clip section here inside the inspector. So we want to define what sound is going to be played when this ball is hitting the wall. And the way to do that is I'm going to use this power on and I'm going to left click, drag and let go. And there you go, it becomes the, it, this is the audio clip now used. And the next thing is we want to add is, okay, we want to turn off play on awake. So this, this box here, make sure we uncheck play on awake. Play on awake just means that when the game object first loads into the scene, when the, uh, the level comes to life, it's going to play that sound as soon as it comes to life. So in this case, because the ball's not actually touching anything in the scene, uh, we don't want it to play. Okay. And the next thing is ah, yeah, audio.play. So when the ball hits the wall, as you remember before, um, we, we get a collision and we, we use that before to make these sparks appear. And so if you click on ball and then go to the ball script here and double click on the ball script. In the on collision uh, function here, I'm just going to add a space and I'm going to click audio.play. Okay. Open and close parentheses with the semicolon at the end. Uh, control and S to save or control and or command and S to save on a Mac, go back into Unity, bottom right, see if it's compiling okay, that should be fine. Now, I'm just gonna turn the volume up a little bit. Actually, it's already on maximum, so we'll see how this goes, if I can hear it. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, that's sounding fine. Hopefully you guys can hear this on uh, on the video later as well, but if you can't, just take my word, it's sounding and everything. everything on your side should be working fine as well. So the other point I just wanted to make here, this audio.play, what I'm writing here is when I'm saying audio is I'm actually asking for this component here. I know this says audio source, but inside of the script, it's just audio. So remember before we did, uh, we accessed the transform here, we, we just typed in the word transform. And, and it's the same here. What we want to do is basically just click or aud type audio here and then the command is just play. And then that means it will play the audio every single time that on collision enter is called. So this is the sparks, which is gives that sort of flash when it hits and when the ball hits anything. And it'll also play that little audio blip or whatever sound you guys have in the game. And that's pretty much it for the ball. So the next thing that we want to do, I think, is the bonus area sounds. Yeah. So when the player actually gets the ball through here, he's awarded, I think we said 50 points before, if I remember correctly. And we also want to give a bit of a sound, so it's a bit of feedback to the player to say, hey, this is a good thing, okay? So here, I'm going to expand the bonus area box down, uh, sorry, the bonus area object, click on the bonus area detection box, and click on component, and then audio source, oh, sorry, component audio, audio source, okay? And then I'm going to left click and drag this hard hard PCM chip sound, let go. And don't forget guys, if you click on the, the, the actual sound itself, don't forget to go to compressed, turn off 3D sound and then click apply. So that will make sure that all the settings are correct. All right, so just go back to the bonus area detection box, uncheck play on awake because we don't want it, to, we don't want this sound to play as soon as the level starts. And we want to adjust this script here, so this bonus area detection script, and then so just double click this, 